Then we have what is called password attacks, which is aimed to grab uh, uh, the attacker wants to grab his hands on the user's passwords for various platforms. Either is going to be an operating system like Windows, Mac, or Linux. Either is going to be a social media account password or an email account password. It all depends. In the end, it's still the attacker still uh, has this, the scope to um, grab his hands on the user's passwords. And there are various methods to um, to uh, identify what is the, the user's password. One of it is going to be guessing, which exploits weak passwords. Like uh, in different regions of the globe, people use pretty much common approaches to creating passwords. Like in, you know, in country X, people may use their birth date and their pet name as the password. Or in other countries, people may use uh, specific naming conventions for the passwords. Like, for example, a lot of IT uh, engineers, uh, when they build, in, build new systems, they put in their temporary passwords that they forget about it in the end. And those temporary passwords are going to be uh, is going to be a commonly used password across all systems, which is also commonly known for in that matter. It can also be done via dictionary attacks. So it's a lot of uh, publicly available dictionaries with commonly used passwords, and you can make use of those dictionaries in there to identify if your targets, your victims' uh, password, is 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 making use of uh, of one of the commonly used passwords across the internet. Or finally, if none of the above methods work, it's going to be a brute force attack which is going to be used as a gateway of last resource in the end. It is, uh, it is the most time-consuming type of attack, but it has the most chances of succeeding. So a brute force attack is going to be uh, a, a system which is going to, is, which was going to happen is going to constantly send authentication requests to the, to, the, to the victim and it's going to choose random usernames and passwords to see if any of those us random usernames and passwords are going to be succeeding. So that's called the brute force attacks where in case I cannot guess the password, in case I cannot uh, uh, consider that the user uses a commonly used password, the dictionary attack, then I'm going to go ahead and try and use pretty much all of the possible combinations of the password in there, which takes a lot more time, but at some point it is going to be successful. How do you protect against those kind of attacks? So first of all, do not store the passwords in clear text at rest or in transit. So this makes sure that the password cannot be stolen by the attacker. So for the attacker to, to grab their hands on your know, password, they may have to steal it or guess it, or maybe they don't have to steal it. Like for this use case, make sure that in the user databases with username and passwords, or in network devices configuration files, you don't store passwords in clear text. Because if the attacker grabs his hands on the database or on the network configuration file, then it's going to see the clear text password and make use of it. And this is a very commonly used type of attack. Because unfortunately, a lot of uh, companies, they don't put in the proper security measures to, to protect them, to store the passwords, not in clear text, or as, uh, as a specific file that contains passwords, it has to also be, to, has to also be protected while in transit. So it's, for example, instead of guessing, let's say you, you want to, um, to grab your hands on the passwords of a lot of Facebook user accounts. It's in, instead of trying to launch a brute force attack or dictionary attack against each account, it's way easier to try and get access within, uh, within Facebook's Insta network, get in the database, and if the passwords are being stored uh, in clear text or not in clear text by using a weak algorithm, then once you copy the, the, the database of users and passwords, you can easily break it and find what is the clear text password. That's a, that's a common approach actually. Likewise, force users to create strong passwords through policies. So train you also, what that means, 
what most commonly happens is that user, uh, users will be forced by their computers or by their email accounts to create strong passwords and in the end what happens the users uh, are going to end up writing down those passwords on piece of papers so that means you have to make sure that you constantly monitor for that not to happen you can you can optionally uh, help the users not to be forced to to type in their complex passwords on, on papers by implementing multi-factor authentication systems where for example you you implement uh, for a user to get access to a system is going to require both a digital certificate and username and password and then the, the, the username and password combination can be simple not complex so the user can retain it easily but then it also requires the certificate which can actually be stored in a safeguarded uh, flashcard or USB stick which the user has to connect to its computer to be actually uh, be readable and usable to authenticate Another method would be to implement one-time password systems, which means that you still make use of, of complex passwords to authenticate to systems, but those complex passwords will be generated by tokens, so the user is going to visually see what the password is, is generated by the token, and then uh, type, type that in the authentication window of the system requiring authentication. Now, those complex passwords generated by OTP systems can be time-based, which means they are, specific, they are valid within specific time intervals, or they can be event-based, which means those passwords are valid only uh, within specific windows of possible passwords.